everyone that seeketh find him. Now Jesus said that. And of course he has reference to finding him, finding God. Ye shall seek for me, and ye shall find me in the day when ye shall seek for me with your whole heart. Finding God. Why, that's the very object of our salvation, to be reconciled to God. Salvation consists in knowing God. How many, many people miss it. How very, very few people in the world know God. You can tell it when you travel through the world and meet with works and ministers. The great complaint is like it was by the prophet Jeremiah. The priests knew not the Lord. How differently they would act and live and minister if they knew the Lord. How different our conventions would turn out if those in charge knew the Lord. But why don't we know him? Jesus says, every one that seeketh, findeth. Findeth what? Why, findeth God. Are we seeking God? Are we really seeking God? Then we shall find him. God says we shall find him. The very principle of faith is to start out with that knowledge why God is. When you seek for something that you want very badly, you're not going to give up until you find that thing. Now the Lord talks about the woman who lost a piece of money. Well, she's got nine pieces. She keeps counting them. Only nine. There should be ten. Well, that one must be someplace. Some place in this house must be that one piece of money. She knows that. Cannot possibly be anywhere else. She looks every place in the wastebaskets, under the bed, in the furniture, every place she looks. And sometimes she thinks she's got it. She sees something glittering, but when she picks it up, she finds out it's only a piece of silver paper. She throws it away. That isn't what she's looking for at all. She is not satisfied until she has found the thing that she's been seeking. So it is with everyone that seeks. Oh, how blessed are the people who are not satisfied with anything. Many, many things will come your way that will look like it. That's where most Christians get stuck. They're satisfied with a little tinsel, a little blessing, a little something. And many times God seems to hide himself purposely from people who seek him to find out whether they can be satisfied with something short of himself. But every one that seeketh findeth. How wonderful God himself makes that statement that every one, man or woman or boy or girl, that seeketh, he says, ye shall find me in the day when ye shall seek for me with your whole heart. It seems to me that there cannot be any excuse for anything else for me to do. Why, that's my life job, to find God. And if I really want to find him, we read in the Old Testament time and again how God complains about people, especially the kings of Judah and Israel, because they did not prepare their hearts to seek the Lord. Then again, he praises some who set their face unto the Lord his God to seek by prayer and fasting in sackcloth and ashes, and he didn't give up until he found. Now you know, Nobody knows what it is to find God until you find him. You don't know. But when you seek for him with your whole heart, you'll find the way. God will draw you. You'll find the way. Oh, in seeking God, the heart is emptied of everything else. Why, that isn't God. How many Pentecostal people have gone astray in seeking after God because they had a feeling 
Now they rest in their feelings. Why, that isn't God. I'm not going to get stuck there. That isn't going to fool me, nor blessings, nor anything of that nature. That doesn't satisfy me. Only God can satisfy my heart. Only God himself. Only Jesus himself. How rare are the souls in comparison who are only satisfied with God, who seek him with their whole heart. Now, if we look back over our lives, how much time have we spent seeking after the Lord? How much, maybe you found him, but tell me, how much sooner you could have found him? How much sooner, oh, how stupid, how shallow we have been, how easily satisfied. But Jesus says, if you seek with your whole heart, you'll find everyone that seeketh findeth. Findeth God. God is in secret. God is waiting in secret to reward you openly. My God, what are you waiting for? When I go to prayer, my chief prayer ought to be to find God. The chief object of my praying ought not to be to get healing or to get health, but to find God. That's the wonder of the prayer life. I meet God. When I draw nigh to God, he draws nigh to me. And time is no object anymore. God has been seeking for me for eternity. And if I spend a little time seeking after him, is that doing a great deal? Oh, if people once get the thought and the delight that eternal life doesn't consist of joining the church or being baptized or having a blessing or having the baptism according to Acts 2, 4. But in knowing God, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom he has sent, they're not going to be stuck and they're not going to be satisfied. And they're not going to be fooled either by things, and signs and wonders and gifts and graces and blessings and feelings. But they're going to press through to know the Lord, oh God. That isn't you. That's not you. Oh, my Lord, this is not going to fool me. I've had confessions from people who backslid when they were blessed very greatly. Oh, how many have done that. You often see it in ministers. They'll seek the Lord until they have a ministry of their own. Be surprised how selfish we are. How many ministers seek to have a ministry when they have that then they let others pray and let others seek the Lord. Blessed is the minister who realizes his need of God more greatly as God begins to use him. Who realizes that without him he can do nothing. A minister who like the Apostle Paul says, I count everything but refuse for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. My father, Paul, was a busy minister, an accomplished apostle, full of the power of God, full of fruitfulness. And at that period, he says, I count everything but refuse. One thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and pressing toward the mark. But look what God did with Paul. He displaced him so fully that when you think of Paul, you don't think of Paul. You think of Jesus. Jesus Christ came forth in the life of Paul in all his majesty and power and is still coming forth. Paul still lives in the church. He is still a pillar in the house of God. We don't see him, but he is. Of course, his body is in heaven. He's with the Lord. But his ministry is still with us because he found God. And here you're listening to me saying some things that are vital. If you take them to heart, if God can inscribe them upon your heart, it will make a difference throughout the ages of eternity. That's important. Paul is different from all the other apostles. Throughout eternity, he says, henceforth, 
there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, he's judging righteously. What does it mean to Jesus to find a heart in this meeting this morning who seeks him with his whole heart? I have seen some during the years of my short life that separated themselves from all others to seek the Lord with their whole heart. They were so different. They were like speckled birds, like lone sparrows upon a housetop, even in deep life conventions. Be surprised how many in deep life conventions let their belly be their God. And the coffee gets hot and the dinner must be ready. And that dominates their thinking and their whole attitude and everything. But I've seen a few people that sought God with their whole heart. And I've been able to see how God came to them. What a change. How different they are today from everybody else that I know. They've sought God, and God united them to himself. They're different. Their thinking is different. Their discernment is different. Nobody understands them. They have the discernment of God. They do things by the will of God and by the power of God. God has come into their lives. And while the natural man can't conceive of it, the day will come when they'll shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. What a privilege I have upon this earth to count everything but refuse, to brush everything aside, to let my heart be attached to nothing. Just one thing I do, just one thing will satisfy my heart, and that is Jesus. Heaven and earth may fade and flee, Nothing interests me. Nothing can satisfy my soul. Do you realize that that's what our hearts are made for? They're made for God. They're made for Christ. We are his workmanship. God wants this heart of mine as a shrine, as a temple to dwell in. God wants this body of mine to be a vessel sanctified and made for the master's use. Why can't you do it? Oh, beloved, we don't seek him with our whole heart. If we did, the 24 hours of our day would be occupied looking to him, paying attention to him, seeking for him, seeking for him. And you don't have to go to Rome or to Jerusalem to find him. You don't, in fact, you don't find him there. Rome is the great harlot. Jerusalem is Sodom and Egypt. You can't find God in any of those places. You've got to find him in your own heart. That's where he is waiting to have your attention. When you guard your heart with all diligence, when you give your heart to Jesus, he will take his great power and he will reign supreme. All oh, the change that comes when you find God, the wonderful change. You become changed. You become transformed. Your natural tendencies are swallowed up by his love and his power and his righteousness and his holiness. And where the flesh reigned and was so strong, Jesus reigns. Jesus Christ reigns. Oh, we don't know how near God is this morning. So near that you'll miss him. You, I tell you, you will miss him unless you seek him where he is. A constant attention, constantly abiding, thinking of him all the time. No, you can't find him if you go out of your own heart. You've got to enter into your own heart, into your own soul. That's the reason we sat here silently this morning. Jesus was speaking to us. He was drawing us. He was pulling us in, bringing us in. Oh, Father, so few people know anything at all about it. It's because they don't seek the Lord. They're satisfied. Oh, they're satisfied. Look into the Christian magazines today. I looked at Christian Life magazine. What a conglomeration of voices. 
What a gin can alley. Excuse me, I say it red. 